General James Doolittle, General Anderson, and other high-ranking American officers responsible for the 8th Air Force's heaviest day raid on Berlin meet for the briefing conference. Sir, the 4 o'clock weather briefing indicated that there would be visual conditions in the Berlin Magdeburg area. This was later confirmed by the 10 o'clock conference. Consequently, it was decided to place two targets in view and line for attack today. In Berlin, the aiming points were the center and the heart of the city, an area bounded by the Lindenstrasse, the Unter der Linden, and the Wilhelmstrasse. In this area are the main governmental offices, the heads of the transportation sections, and the heads of the military organizations now believed to be directing the fighting on the Eastern Front. More than a thousand flying fortresses sweep out from their bases in England to hammer the German capital. The stern voice of retributive justice comes to Berlin in the heavy drone of bombers. From Berlin went the orders which wreaked havoc in Rotterdam and Warsaw. From Berlin also, Germany watched without pity the agony of those millions of refugees whom war turned into sad armies of the uprooted and dispossessed. Today, the wheel has turned full circle. Berliners are undergoing the ordeal to which they unprotestingly committed the great cities of Europe. In 45 minutes, 2,500 tons of high explosive and incendiaries rained down on the government and army administrative offices in the heart of the city. As succeeding waves of bombers strike home, Aerial cameras installed in the underside of the flying fortresses record a sequence of devastation. Smoke boils up through the clouds to a height of more than two miles, blanketing all but fleeting glimpses of such tempting targets as the Reich Chancellery, Dr. Goebbels Propaganda Ministry, and the German War Office. Latecomers among the attacking planes come in like the stragglers of a great migration of birds. They had to use electronic eye instruments to locate their targets. Anti-aircraft fire was intense at times, but the Luftwaffe was conspicuous by its absence. In this operation, the Americans lost 19 bombers and five fighters. As they head for home, they leave behind them a reminder to Germans that war doesn't pay. Berlin, they say, is now a city of dreadful night. As an American airman said after this trip, when Stalin's boys get to Berlin, They'd better bring a fire department, because the place is really burning now. Yeah.